Black holes are often understood as giant black voids in space. But are they really these voids, or is there something beyond? How big are these giants, and why are they so dangerous? Well, today's video covers all of these questions and also about the hypergiant black hole, Tun618. Hello guys, welcome back to Salty Space. Watch till the end and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more such space content. So let's just jump right into the video. Unlike the name suggests, black holes are not simply holes or empty spaces. Black holes are tightly packed bodies of matter that do not allow even light to escape from them. Anything that passes beyond the event horizon or the point of no return will not be able to escape the gravitational pull of the black hole and will be gone forever. These are not uncommon things in space. It's estimated that in the Milky Way itself, there may be around 10 million to 1 billion black holes. Imagine how many there will be in the whole universe. They are undoubtedly frightening, ferocious objects, but it's exactly this all-consuming nature that draws us to them. Within their bounds, they hold the answer to mystery we've been trying to solve for centuries. Over three times the mass of the sun is the tiniest black hole that's ever been discovered. For instance, the black hole in the binary star system XTEJ1650500 has a mass of only 3.8 solar masses. That might seem insignificant, but keep in mind that a single solar mass weighs 2 times 10 up 30 kilograms. Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, our own galaxy, is 4.5 million solar masses. Most of these black holes are so isolated that they're not even that easy to locate. They like their solitude, I guess. The black holes are observed by observing their gravitational effects. The observation is possible only for these black holes that have the most mass, are the most active, and are most astronomically prominent. This means we only have the knowledge only about a small fraction of the total black holes in the universe. Well, that means if there was one dormant one near us, we wouldn't be able to locate it unless it becomes active or has considerable mass. A black hole has the mass of millions of suns put together. In the majority of galaxies, if not all, the supermassive black holes with masses millions to billions of times the mass of the sun can be found. We see things around us because light falling on the objects reflects and falls back to our eyes. Since black holes do not allow light to escape, we cannot visibly see a black hole. But with special telescopes that facilitate the study of matter around a black hole, scientists observe and study these lurking monsters. We have been able to visualize the heated disk of material that surrounds one of these cosmic monsters, despite the fact that that they are practically invisible. This is the first time that a magnificent image shows the shadow of a supermassive black hole that is encircled by a brilliant ring of bending light and gas. Remember the Interstellar movie? One of the reasons we can see this intriguing luminous structure is that it is so massive. It's situated at the center of Messier 87, a large elliptical galaxy around 55 million light years away. This black hole is considered to have a mass of 6.5 billion times more than the mass of our sun, and the event horizon is estimated to be around 38 billion kilometers across which is three times the size of Pluto's entire orbit. Although this is a giant black hole, it is not as big as the biggest known black hole. The biggest black hole known to existence in this universe at present is Tun 618, but it's often classified as a quasar. A quasar is a brightly shining jet of light that is found at the center of a distant galaxy. But within this extremely luminant object, a black hole is believed to exist. The optical spectra of Tun 618 that Mari Helen Ulrich later acquired at the McDonald Observatory revealed emission lines typical of a quasar. Ulrich inferred that Tun 618 was extremely distant and thus one of the brightest quasars known from the high redshift of the lines. It's believed that the material whirling around inside of a massive black hole is what produces quasars. The acceleration disk is a region outside the event horizon where gas and dust are rotating at an accelerating rate, being heated up, generating enormous quantities of energy, and making potent twin jets of radiation that are being shot out into space for millions of light years. This jet of light outshines the entire neighboring galaxy with an intensity of 140 trillion times that of the sun. The hypergiant black hole is believed to exist in the middle of this quasar. This lurking monster has an estimated diameter of 242 billion miles or 390 billion kilometers, which is more than 40 times the size of Neptune's orbit and has 66 billion times more than the mass of the sun. It's unlikely that we would ever fully understand objects of this scale because our brains were not built on understanding such massive figures. 
The distance from Neptune to the Sun is greater than 40 times the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole with this mass, which is 1,300 AU, or nearly 390 billion kilometers in diameter. Tun 618 is located 10 billion light years away among the constellation of the Canes Venatici. The reason why we could locate this black hole is because of its luminosity and mass. The quasar containing Tun 618 was first discovered in 1957 during a study of faint blue stars far from the plane of the Milky Way. At the time, Mexican astronomers Braulio Iriarte and Enrique Xavier entered it as entry number 618 in the Tonnant Zintler catalog. Tun 618 was suggested to be a quasar because radio emissions from it was picked up by a survey in Bologna in Italy in 1970. Marie Helene Ulrich obtained Tun 618 optical spectra at the McDonald Observatory and they showed emission spectrum characteristics to quasars. Ulrich concluded that Tun 618 was one of the brightest quasars because of its great distance and high redshift. The active galactic nucleus in the center of the galaxy is assumed to be represented by Tun 618 as a quasar. A supermassive black hole serves as its engine, consuming extremely hot gas and matter from an accretion disk. Since at least the 1980s, the existence of Tun 618 as a Lyman Alpha emitter has been well reported. A distant galaxy known as a Lyman Alpha emitter, or LAE, if it releases Lyman Alpha radiation from neutral hydrogen. Tun 618, with its luminous emission of Lyman Alpha radiation along with its high redshift, has made it one of the most important objects in the study of Lyman Alpha forest. Lyman Alpha Forest is a series of emission and absorption spectral lines arising due to the Lyman Alpha emissions. A massive cloud of gas encircling the quasar and its host galaxy was discovered by observations by the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, in 2021 as the apparent source of the Lyman Alpha radiation of Tun 618. This makes it a Lyman Alpha Blob, or LAB, one of the largest such objects yet known. In particular, examining the ionization and early development of massive galaxies, the observation of Tun 618 and its large LAB provided insight into the process that drives the creation of big galaxies. We could possibly find the answers to our ever-curious doubts about the formation of the galaxies around the universe. Recent studies have suggested the possibility of even more giants existing in the universe. These are estimated to have 100 billion times more than the mass of the Sun. They are nicknamed SLABs or slabs or stupendously large black holes. Observing slab via one of its gravitational effects is possible. Because of their deep gravity well, these black holes will cause lensing or the bending of light as it passes through intense gravitational fields. They would also disturb the structure of galaxies and emit radiation in the form of heat and light. Scientists are still unsure as to how even normal supermassive black holes are created, raising the question of whether stupendously big black holes can even exist at all. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. I hope you found this video informative and interesting. I hope it's possibly lighted a few sparks of interest in the mysteries held by the universe. We will be back with more such wonders and mysteries from space, so stay tuned to watch them. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video.